Hello, hope you are doing well. Today I am going to take up a poem from NCERT's English textbook for class 10. The name of the textbook is First Flight, Unit 9 and the title of the poem is The Tale of Custard the Dragon. You can also open your books on page 129. Let's begin with the poem. As simple as it may seem, writing a poem often requires great attention to detail. Writing a poem that makes a serious point while using humor is even more challenging. Luckily for all of us, there was a poet who had the knack to rhyme his words, paint a picture, make us laugh and notice the potential for poetry in something as routine as going to a dentist, describing animals or celebrating occasions. I am talking of Ogden Nash. Ogden Nash was an American poet and humorist, a versatile writer. His works aimed primarily at children, appealed to readers across generations. The best of his work was published in 14 volumes between 1931 and 1972. He wrote well over 500 poems in his lifetime. Imagine, he also appeared on comedy shows on radio and TV and also wrote screenplays for films. Nash claimed to think in rhyme. He was always playing with words in his mind and it is said that he had always thought in rhyming words since the age of six. A two line poem from him that represents his felicity with words is titled The Cow. The Cow, the two lines and a complete poem. The cow is of the bovine ilk, one end is moo, the other milk and that's it. And he has described the cow beautifully. So it is of little surprise that he has been celebrated for his unconventional rhymes. Readers and critics regard his work as witty and immensely readable. And I am sure you will also enjoy reading the poem. And today we are going to read a poem of his titled The Tale of the Custard Dragon. It is written in the style of a ballad. Now what is a ballad? It is a song or a poem that tells a story. You must be familiar with ballads that narrate tales of courage or heroism from India too like that of Rani Lakshmi Bai or Jalkari Bai. You must be knowing about Rani Lakshmi Bai. Well, if you do not know about Jalkari Bai, she was also a soldier in Rani Lakshmi Bai's team. Read about her and you will enjoy reading. Let's continue. What sets this poem apart from the usual style is that it is a humorous ballad and quite close to a parody. The poet uses exaggeration to create a comic effect. Now as I read the poem aloud, pay attention to the rhythm. Not only this, while I read the poem for you, you can open your books on page 29, observe the punctuation marks because punctuation marks also help us get the meaning of the poem. When there is a sign of exclamation, that means there is a surprise. And if there is a comma, a shorter pause is required. And a period means you have to pause and a new item or a new idea will begin from here. I hope it is clear to you and also you know you have to follow the rhythm of the poem. You have to pause at the right place 
and also please notice the rhyme scheme that the poet has used. We will discuss about it once the poem has been read. The Tale of Custard the Dragon Belinda lived in a little white house with a little black kitten and a grey mouse and a little yellow dog and a little red wagon and a realio trulio little pet dragon. Now the name of the little black kitten was Ink and the little grey mouse she called him Blink and the little yellow dog was sharp as mustard but the dragon was a coward and she called him Custard. Custard the dragon had big sharp teeth and spikes on top of him and scales underneath, mouth like a fireplace, chimney for a nose and realio trulio daggers on his toes. Belinda was as brave as a barrel full of bears and ink and blink chased lions down the stairs. Mustard was as brave as a tiger in a rage but Custard cried for a nice safe cage. Belinda tickled him. She tickled him unmerciful. Ink, Blink and Mustard. They rudely called him Percival. They all sat laughing in the little red wagon at the realio trulio cowardly dragon. Belinda giggled till she shook the house and Blink said weak which is giggling for a mouse. Ink and Mustard rudely asked his age when Custard cried for a nice safe cage. Suddenly, suddenly they heard a nasty sound and Mustard growled and they all looked around. Mewch! cried Ink and oh cried Belinda and there was a pirate climbing in the window, pistol in his left hand, pistol in his right and he held in his teeth a cut less bright. His beard was black, one leg was wood. It was clear that the pirate meant no good. Belinda paled and she cried, help, help, but Mustard fled with a terrified yelp. Ink trickled down to the bottom of the household and the little mouse blink strategically mouse hold. But up jumped Custard, snorting like an engine, clashed his tail like irons in a dungeon with a clatter and a clank and jangling squirm he went at the pirate like a robin at a worm. The pirate gaped at Belinda's dragon and gulped some grog from his pocket flagon. He fired two bullets but they didn't hit and Custard gobbled him every bit. Belinda embraced him. Mustard licked him. No one mourned for his pirate victim. Ink and blink in glee did gyrate around the dragon that ate the pirate. But presently up spoke little dog Mustard. I would have been twice as brave if I hadn't been flustered. And up spoke ink and up spoke blink. We would have been three times as brave we think and Custard said I quite agree that everybody is braver than me. Belinda still lives in her little white house with her little black kitten and her little grey mouse and her little yellow dog and her little red wagon and her realio trulio little pet dragon. Belinda is as brave as a barrel full of bears and ink and blink chase lions down the stairs. 
Mustard is as brave as a tiger in a rage, but custard keeps crying for a nice safe cage. A poem by Ogden Nash. Did you enjoy listening to the poem? I am sure you must have. Let us discuss the poem. This poem describes a little girl Belinda and her pets. Her pets are a black kitten called Ink, a grey mouse named Blink, a yellow dog named Mustard and a dragon called Custard who they think is a coward. He keeps looking for a nice place to hide. Why do you think they think like that? Why Custard is always looking for a nice place? Because he wants to settle down in one place because he gets irritated when the cat and the dog and the mouse are running all over the place. Therefore, he is looking for a nice place to settle down in one corner. He does not want to run around the house. The dragon has dagger like sharp nails, sharp teeth and spikes on his scales. All the pets of Belinda consider themselves to be very very brave. They all used to sit on a red wagon and make fun of the dragon who is assumed to be a coward. He is not actually a coward. When a pirate came who saved everybody? It was the dragon. One day a pirate holding pistols in both hands enters the house all of a sudden. He also held a sword between his teeth. Belinda gets extremely frightened and cries for help. But all her pets flee away and hide themselves. It is Custard who comes forward bravely. He fights with the pirate and swallows him. This shows that Custard is not a coward. Instead all the other pets that kept saying that they were two or three times braver than the dragger failed to rise to the occasion. It is now clear that indeed the dragon is the only brave one while all the others are cowards. Ogden Nash wrote comic verse with great skill. One of the nicest tributes to him was by the intellectual Anthony Burgess who said that he brought a new kind of sound to literary works. He was clever with his writing and even if his lines were sometimes of considerable length, they were colloquial prose like and they were fun to read. The presentation of rhymes brought the informal and the formal together. His work was simply genius. Now that we have finished reading the poem, I want you to read the poem on your own. Read it aloud and after that you annotate it. While you are annotating the poem, that means you are writing stanza wise summary, the clarity will be more. Well, if you come across any difficult words, try to guess the meaning from the context of the poem. Otherwise, you can refer to the dictionary and from the dictionary also try to pick up the word that will fit into the context of the poem. Because in a dictionary, you will get so many words, right? So, the task for you is to read the poem, annotate it and refer to the dictionary if you do not understand any word. But there are a couple of difficult words over here that you have come across that is grog and gyrate. Grog a drink typically drunk by sailors and then gyrate to move around in circles. Then there is another word cutlass. It is a short sword very sharp blade. So can you think of words that rhyme with each of these words? A small activity for you. Write it in your notebooks, then you can share it with your friends. I hope the poem is clear to you now. It is written in a very simple way. It goes like a story hmm? and we have already discussed 
that custard the dragon was not coward he was actually brave there is a small activity for you can you think of words that rhyme with these words you can do it note down in your notebooks share it with your friends and enjoy now let us discuss a few questions comprehension questions who are the characters in this poem list them with their pet names of course you know go to the first stanza the characters in this poem are belinda a little black kitten a little gray mouse a little yellow dog a little pet dragon and a pirate and what are their names kitten that black kitten is called ink you see ink black kitten the name is very relevant to the kitten then mouse blink blink that means one moment mouse is here and the next moment when you blink the mouse is gone somewhere else so blink a very appropriate name dog mustard mustard is very pungent so maybe the dog barks so much that he is you know not very pleasant to hear and dragon is named custard he keeps sitting in one place okay like a custard is it clear to you the next question why did custard cry for a nice safe cage why is the dragon called cowardly dragon custard is called a cowardly dragon because everybody else in the house insisted they were very brave mark the words they insisted they were not actually brave belinda was as brave as a barrel of bears that is what we are told by the poet ink and blink are described as so brave that they could chase lions down the stairs and mustard was as brave as a tiger in rage compared to them custard cried asking for a nice and safe cage why do you think so because he didn't want to be disturbed by them okay which is why they called him a coward next question belinda tickled the dragon unmercifully because it was very scared and cried for a safe cage they all laughed as if they considered the dragon a coward why the dragon was not a coward the dragon just wanted a corner to be away from all the noise that was there in the house next question are you ready for it the poet has employed many poetic devices in the poem and that's the beauty of the poem let's look at them for example clashed his tail like iron in a dungeon the poetic device used here is simile you must be knowing that when we compare something by using the word like or as that means we are using the poetic device simile now there is a small task for you can you list some more such poetic devices used in the poem i am going to give you 30 seconds then i will share mine with you are you ready have you been able to tick i am sure you must have now in the entire poem the poet has used the poetic device simile for example mustard was as brave as a tiger in a rage the word of use as belinda is as brave as a barrel full of bears i have given you two examples you can note down the rest from the poem another poetic device that has been used is repetition repetition is used to lay emphasis on something let's take the example for example the repetitive use of the word little in the first and the second stanza to emphasize how everything from the house to belinda to her pets were all little i'm going to read the stanza once again for you notice the use of word little belinda lived in a little white house with a little black kitten and a little gray mouse and a little yellow dog and a little red wagon and a realio trulio little pet 
dragon. So, we come to know that everything is little. So, this is another poetic device repetition to lay emphasis on something. Now, the name of the little black kitten was ink and the little gray mouse she called him blink and the little yellow dog was sharp as mustard and the dragon was a coward and she called him custard. Is it clear to you all? Let us look at the third poetic device. Uh, there is alliteration which means the occurrence of the same letter or sound at the beginning of adjacent or closely connected words. Let us take one example. Belinda was as brave as a barrel full of bears. Notice the use of the letter B. Belinda, brave, barrel, bears. So, this is an example of alliteration. Another example is and gulp some gorge from his pocket flagon. In the tenth stanza also, the poet writes, Custard has clashed his tail with a clatter and a clank. I hope this is clear now. Literary device onomatopoeia has been used in the poem. Clutter, clank, jangling, meowch, growled, weak. What is onomatopoeia? Onomatopoeia is defined as a word which imitates the natural sounds of a thing. It creates a sound effect that mimics the thing described, making the description more expressive and interesting. We can actually visualize it. Also, in the seventh stanza, the poet has used the word winda. What does it mean? To maintain the rhyme scheme of the poem, he has chosen to write winda instead of window as Vinda rhymes with Belinda, whereas window does not. So, poets do take this you know poetic license you know to play with the words. Nash was known to invent words or shorten them to keep his rhyme schemes intact. Next question is read stanza 3 again to know how the poet describes the appearance of the dragon. We have read it number of times. Custard the dragon had big sharp teeth and spikes on top of him and scales underneath, mouth like a fireplace, chimney for his nose and realio, trulio, daggers on his toes. So, he seems like a very ferocious dragon. All dragons are. And, uh, but he is described as a coward which he is not. Now, let us discuss about the rhyme scheme of the poem. We have been talking about it quite a bit. Go back and read stanza 1. You will find that it ends with house mouse. So, we will say it is A A. Then wagon dragon B B. Then when we move on to the next stanza, it will be ink blink C C. Then next one mustard custard D, D. Now, if in the same stanza the rhyme scheme is repeated, then we go back to A, A or B, B. But in a new stanza, we continue with the new letters. I hope it is clear to you. My next question is, writers use words to give us a picture or image without actually saying what they mean. Yes, that is the power of language. Can you trace some images used in the poem? Where the image is absolutely clear, especially read stanza 3 where the dragon has been described. Have you done it? I will share my examples with you. Mouth like a fireplace, chimney for a nose, brave as a barrel full of bears, brave as a tiger in a rage, went at the pirate like a robin at a warm. Now, next question. This poem in ballad form tells a story. Have you come across any such modern song or lyric that tells a story? If you know one, 
tell it to your friends in your class share it with your teacher you can share it with us also you know cit and crt email id we will get back to you now the task for you is collect such songs as a project now we come to the writing section but before that i would like to share something for, with you do you know that vikram seth has written a novel the golden gate in verse form and this particular poem is written in a story form so you can choose any form to write that is what i want to tell you if one form is not really comfortable with you you may choose another form to express your creative ideas now the task for writing is choose a topic now i leave it to you you can choose any topic and write a ballad gather information choose or decide on idea or theme then organize your materials under characters and story and then write revise and edit your ballad to make it entertaining maybe you want to change the sentences or you want to change the words that is up to you so editing and revising play an important role you may use the following guidelines to write your ballad number 1 the purpose of writing the ballad to entertain and to create the interest to whom is the work addressed decide for whom you are writing how should i structure this tell a simple narrative keep a few major characters don't clutter it so much aim for a strong rhythm and rhyme you may have a refrain single or two lines repeated often that is refrain okay and divide the story into verses so if you may write the story first convert it into verses so you are you know dealing with two forms that is the beauty of creative writing with this we have come to the end of this session i am sure you enjoyed listening to the poem and read the poem on your own annotate it do the creative task happy reading and thank you